Uh, Monday, October 26, 2009, Public Safety Committee to order, and I'll entertain a motion for the minutes of last month. So moved. Got a motion to have a second. Second. And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion is carried. First on the agenda tonight is going to be the Laverne Rescue Squad. Good evening, everybody. How's it going tonight? Good. My name is uh, David Martin, and I uh, apologize for Dana not being here. He's under the weather, so I get his duties to see him. What you have before you on the top sheet is the uh, quarterly summary for July, August, and September totals. Then the sheets behind that are broken down into each month. July, August, and September as well. So, and while you're going through that, uh, just a little synopsis. What we have going on now on the last page is that uh, we're replacing our 1992 truck, and so we've already purchased a 2009 F550 chassis. And now in the next uh, couple of weeks, we'll be remounting the utility box from the 92 forward to the new one. So we hope to have that one uh, done hopefully by December, early January. Uh, also want to note that uh, Laverne, as well as the two other rescue squads in the county, Spring and Rutherford, will be hosting the 2010 Tennessee Association of Rescue Squads yearly uh, convention. And we'll be uh, asking support from just about every business within the county to donate door prizes, uh, you know, anything that they'd like to have or advertisement for, for our uh, weekend program. And it'll be the TARS's 55th anniversary, and of course, 2010 will be Laverne's 40th anniversary. And in a little mental note, there is uh, our next ham breakfast will be November 14th at our facility on Gamble Lane. Okay. Any questions? Where's the this convention going to be at? It's going to be at the new embassy there on Medical Center Parkway. Need to get a lot of businesses to help you out on that one. Oh, we're, we're, we're going to. And what's the dates for? It will be, let's, uh, it's usually the first weekend of October. I can get those to you closer. I guess this seems it finalized. But the association's finalized the uh, Embassy Suites Convention Center. So. You said the first week of it's October? Usually, no, usually, yeah, usually the first weekend of October. This is the first weekend it's already passed. Uh, 2010. Oh, okay. It's 2010. I think <laughs> <laughs> we're already passed the first weekend. Yeah, no, it'll be 2010. All right. <laughs> uh, Anybody else? How did y'all do on your, on your last breakfast as far as fundraising? Uh, we, uh, we made a little bit of, we made a pretty bad thing for the time. We made a decent profit oh, off of it, yeah. We'll mention it again. On, we okay. had a commission meeting on the 12th, and so we'll make sure that it gets mentioned there. Y'all are able to get on the, uh, in the Channel 19? Yes. And, and advertise on that? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it says you have no missed calls and no missed shifts. Um, no shifts. How many or what percentage do you actually have two people that go out uh, when you get a call? We mainly staff at least uh, 90, 95 percent of the time with two personnel. Very rarely is that one. <coughs> and of those two, how qualified are the average wise? Is one qualified pretty much on everything and the other? We try one? to keep both our personnel uh, qualified at what we call the advanced level. Mm -hmm. There's an advanced level within TARS for the extrication. Uh, it's a program that's offered twice a year through the state association. It's just a higher training. Uh, several Murfreesboro fire departments, <coughs> a lot of fire departments in the county have been through it. So. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Got a motion or second on the floor? On the I don't have a motion. Don't have a motion. Do you approve the report? Second. Report. Motion and a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. No, sir. Thank awesome. you. Appreciate you have it. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Will tax officer report.
Jenna. Start off on the first sheet there, warning letters of wheel tax <coughs> violations there, 46 total. Written citations there, seven. 49 vehicles checked, 2.5 hours court time. Wheel tax violations, 24. Late renewal, 27. And late renewals is when a person comes in late or hadn't renewed. When we go back and pull them two years, we make them go back if they. In other words, if they owned a car, lived here, and hadn't had a wheel tax check on, we go back two years. Mm -hmm. you know. uh, return checks is 31. Registration is 9. That's 9 violations of ticket road registration. Registration letters, 43. Letter violations, four. Uh, letter letters, nine. Twelve pending on the letter. Uh, going off and dumping or dumping into something trash means that you're not supposed to. Any questions on that? Second page is problems with these are still ones that are coming in from schools. Uh, you see that's uh, the ones that sent in this past month. I'm having to go back to I'm having to go back to just about every school because I'm getting <coughs> a name, a name and an address, and if they hadn't not in our system, it's I can't pull it. I I, I need a tag number where I can pull it along with our system. So. I've gone back to the ones I've talked to and tried to continue doing what they're doing, but changing and see if they can give me a tag number because it's so much quicker through the system. I can put the tag in it and really just see what they've done. But, you know. Well, this has been the first year. Well, yeah. There's yeah. some things we can work yeah, out. Yes, things can work out. And, and uh, Angel at the uh, uh, school board, she <coughs> very cooperative, helping us do what we need to do. And, you know, like I said, this is first year, and, and uh, but it, it, it slowed our process down some, but it's still more than we we just paid more than we thought we would get. The shows here 192 <clears throat> for this month. Yes, How sir. many total have we received from the school system that are violated? I was 40 percent last month, but I ain't got percentage this month. I that was just schools that I you know out of out of. The 500 something that we tracked down, or around 40 percent. So 40 percent of the 500 right. was schools. Well, that's all. That 40 percent was all that I took them off the all. But on the the number, uh, what's the total number of of actually people that that were in violation that were caught well, through all it, schools? Yeah, like I said, I've, I've had 500 something turned in. And like I said, it's a slow process of going back right. and through pulling these. Cause that's why I've had to go back to schools and, right. and kind of change to get a, a tag number. You know, if I got a tag number, I can pull it just right. like that and see. But know, those those 500, that. is it 500 that was before and then plus the 192? This this 190, yes, that's that's in the 500. Yes, yes. Okay, that's in the 500. It was 113 this past month and a half. Okay. And 79 last month, so I got 113 this past month and a half. <coughs> so we've had right out of 500. A little over 500. Oh, good. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But of those, what's the process with them? Okay, you got some of these came probably out in July when they registered. Yeah. Came to you. Yeah, so they, and the they ones that we can find, I mean, the ones that we are pulling up, we put in that system, they're, they're paying. You know. <coughs> if, like I said, if I don't have if I don't have correct information, I can't put a false name in it, a tag number with it, you know. So that's why I'm having to go back to the school and try to get a tag number so, you know. Okay, but what if we say we have five hundred since July, okay, including these now. The process you okay you well, have to get not, find a tag number and then you follow up and that that doesn't that doesn't mean five hundred Wheel tax violations, you know, it's 500 that hadn't registered their vehicles 
they're registered here, but they're not showing the right address. <clears throat> you understand what I mean? So they could have moved, but they, still they, been. They, 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 they could move. In other words, if you transferred, if you transferred from Laverne and you went to Riverdale, that address is not going to match. You, you, you've got the will tax and the registration of Rub County, but what the school board has been putting down to anybody that address that they didn't have and didn't match. It's not all will. A lot of that is will tax. But not all of these 500 something are will tax violations. But I thought, and someone here correct me if I'm wrong, I thought that's what the intent was. That, that, that is that. That's why I'm, that's why I'm coming back and, and visiting these schools and, and writing it down to get the tag number where we can match and we get people moving here from Texas. Louisiana, those people, you know, mm -hmm. they got 30 days, and most of what the girls tell me is coming in, they're doing it. Some didn't know what a wheel tax was, you know. But we have quite a few that are moving from other counties in Tennessee to here, correct? Okay. I will say yes, sir. But look, got, uh, looking at those sheets, yes, sir. <coughs> yes, sir. yes, sir. Because we gained, we were the, gained the most population of any county in the state in the year 2008. So those, I think a lot of those people, I, I'm sure I'd probably be one of them too. If I, if the same thing happened to it, I would think that the tags I had from the county I came from would last until. Well, I, and I, I run across that today, and not knocking a car dealer. Sorry, I, I got a man that he bought a, he bought a car for his daughter in another county that touches us, and they told him, said, so we'll get our tag, get your tags for you. Well, they can get the tags, state tags. And I know wheel tax, you know. And he moving here, he didn't know anything about a wheel tax. He, you know. And I I preached this to the motor vehicle and, uh, and NCIC and stuff like that, you know, if we were all the same price, it didn't make a difference where you buy it. Everything, you know, you know, well Chevrolet won't sit at twenty five dollars, you know, Rough County won't sit at seventy six fifty, you know. But we do want the ones the violation, you know. And of course, to, today issuing issuing them, I give them a warning ticket and give them thirty days to get your ticket. Well, he came up there this afternoon, very full clothes, and got that, you know. So, you know. And, but if we don't, if we don't get get it out that people have to do this and dealers will keep doing this, you know, it it, it clogs the system. You know, it's only fall back too, though, that, that these clerk's office fall where they, they have to see the, the, the address of the people, the clerk office, and say in Bedford County or Warren County or whatever. And we've got they, them, They're not even really right. should be allowed to even sell it, even though they see the address. And, they're still and, doing and, that. And like I've talked to some of the counties, if that person comes up here and tells me that I live at 1031 Foster across the line, you know. They're busy. They're gonna sell them at two thirty-one across the line. You know, they're not gonna look at. It. They're not gonna say, "Well, I'm a liar." You know, well, it's for us to catch that. Time. <coughs> Convenience centers. Uh, or <coughs> I was there. Remember, the convenience centers is is. I'm. I've got a man that's. that's Picking up roads that's less than already got cancer, probably won't be back with us. I'm down that person. I've got one part time man that works two days a week. I'm not getting roads picked up. I'm not getting roads picked up because I don't have the manpower. I talked to the <coughs> workhouse and I can't do anything till this man's time runs out. You know, wish he could come back, but don't think he'll ever be back because of his health, you know. So that puts me just two days a week picking trash up. And I, I'm telling you, it's, I've, I've got several, I called the mayor two or three weeks ago, and he got me some help for a time to, to do some picking up, and I appreciate that. But uh, that's something that we've got to need to look for. And I've got to have somebody picking up somewhere every day, because I could send them somewhere every day. I've got a couch here. Lady called me this morning for saddle drive. She said, I've got a commode ladder up here beside my house on the road. Well, surely she wants that picked up in front of her house, and I don't blame her, you know. But I ain't got nobody to send that there, you know. 
So you you probably going to hear some calls, but I ain't got manpower to see if you get to this. You ain't got any manpower to supervise the inmates? That's, well, that's right. I, the man said, we've got the inmates. Yeah, Someone has a man park I got to have put some man in, in that van to haul it, you know. Now, state roads different thing. I, I don't have anything to do with state roads, but I county roads are different. What about um, Freddie, the guy that works for Mike? Can, can they help? I don't know. Well, yeah, I don't know. We're, we're going to have to improvise. Yes, sir. The person we've had has been substantially paid through a grant and. Uh, and this is, uh, we don't have any more money there that's available, but we'll have to do something internally with our solid waste department or with our maintenance department or somebody to help. Uh, I mean, he's, and he's out there, not, not saying he's got a lot of time on his hands, well, but he might be able to do it. He's we will, we're going to try to work through this. Mm -hmm. We try to give a little bit more part time, but that's really not going to be sufficient long term. We really were just trying to see. If, what the probabilities of our person coming back to us are. We'll, we'll work something through that. Appreciate that. Page three is <coughs> figures there. Probably don't like, but I, I can't control it. You know. Is some of that due to the car sales being down? Sure. Definitely. People not buying. People not buying. Getting tired. No. It doesn't have anything to do with the wheel tax, huh? Well, Mr. Chief, you know, let, 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 me, let me just say, <coughs> 653 miles in this county, Bart is one. Bart has got wheel tax, he's got litter, he's got checks, 14 convenience centers, and 210 school buses starting in the morning inspect, not counting the, skid, the, the county buses. And I can just... I can just do so much, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, today, I spent five hours total on one thing for a litter violation that ended up doing nothing. It took me five hours from the time it started to get it to the court system, and it done nothing. You mean the judge done nothing? Well, I mean, the court done what they supposed to, but it took me five hours from the time about issued that citation to get it to the court system. Today, five hours. But the, ju case. but the judge didn't do nothing? Well, it, 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 we retired the case with some circumstances, but it took five hours to get that one case. And, and just like if you call me in the morning and say, Bart, at my road, some stuff out here, and I need mean, somebody to look at it, it, it takes time. I mean, mm -hmm. you, can't, you, you can't be everywhere at one time. Well, that was one reason, one of the reasons that I had pushed it as much as I did about getting the uh, registration checked in the school system. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I knew we were having a, we could, we could catch a lot that way. I, I think we're in the right, I know we're in the right direction for doing this. Like I said, it's first time it's had some kinks in it, you know. And, and you know, uh, but I think the school board is working with us, you know. Right. You know. I think next year we can start a little bit early and get, well, and get some other information I, out to them. I, I am, I, I'm a, I talked to the <coughs> the other day. I'm gonna make a form, just what I want on that form, and run care some of each school, back to each school, and then let them fill it out how to take it out there. That way, that when it gets back to me, all that she's got to do is put that number and then go through the system. Yeah. Okay. That's all I have. Any questions or any reports? Move to a further report. Got a motion and a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Juvenile detention. things of interest on this September report. Um, the first thing, if you would look at September out-of-county bill versus out-of-county received, you will notice that that looks strange. Uh, that's because I've transposed those numbers. 
out of county build should be 525 and out of county received should be 51450. <clears throat> so that was just a clerical mistake. Uh, beyond that, uh, the only other thing I have to report that's not in front of you is that we had our state inspection, passed it wonderfully, and uh, the comment that was made is that we were cleaner than most daycares. So I thought that was funny, but I shared. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all I have for this month, unless you have any questions. Any questions? If there's none, I'll entertain a motion when you get, when you get through. Move to approve. There's a motion and a second. Second. And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Anything else? Thank you. <coughs> OSHA reporting, I think you got there in front of you. Evening. How's it going? Fine, thank you. Um, as you see in front of you there, in the month of September, we had a 24 injuries that required medical attention. And you see the breakout there. Uh, for year to date, we have 194. Of that 194, there's 130 which are act actually uh, recordable under the OSHA <coughs> standard. 43 of those have restricted days, 31 lost claim days, and 56 are classified as other recordables. On the next page, you can see the graph representation of where they are. Notice that it did come down some from the previous month, or a previous time this year, last year, uh, down quite a bit from last month. <coughs> and then uh, out of that 24 injuries, you'll notice over a couple of pages that the Board of Education had a total of 17. And you can see where the slip, trip, and fall strains and struck or injured by were the three top of them at five each. Under uh, Rutherford County General, you'll notice that we had uh, a total of six, and five of those were all classified as struck or injured by, and then the remainder of those were with the uh, County Highway Park. That's the report that we had present tonight. Any questions on the report? <clears throat> Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Motion to approve the report. Got a motion and a second. Second. And a second. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. I'm excited about this next thing. We have put together a uh, health and safety newsletter, and you have a copy of that in front of you. This is our first newsletter. We expect to bring it out quarterly. Uh, Tim Street, who is the uh, training specialist, works to put with this all together, so I commend Tim. Uh, it involves several things. First off, it's the open enrollment that we've been going through at this time is in this. Also, any uh, updates or spotlights for care here, uh, some lighter side. It also includes some training issues. If we've got training going on, which we do have, we bring that up and address that uh, as training. Then uh, the big thing that I think it's the most important is we actually want to highlight an individual, and we did this month uh, quarter, and we intend to continue that uh, with the Rutherford County Safety Award. And uh, we highlight this by we recognize Kenneth Terry for his efforts with the uh, EMS safety program. Kenny instituted and completed a comprehensive safety inspection for all 14 EMS work sites. He recognized many of the potential unsafe conditions. He made the corrective actions and conducted follow-up inspections to ensure their implementation. Because of his actions, he has provided a safer workplace for his co-workers. And Kenny is an extremely valuable asset to his department and to the county. And we recognize that. And, uh, and uh, you'll notice in, the program, or in this uh, newsletter that uh, he's highlighted and also uh, there with the mayor as the mayor presented him with his award. So uh, I want to uh, bring him to your attention and, uh, and uh, ask for your endorsement on that also. I think that's a good communication tool for all the employees and also the commission to be able to see these what's going on as far as safety. And we plan to do this quarterly and highlight again one employee. We've been with all the uh, safety coordinators for all the departments. They have got copies of the uh, uh, award nomination. And we're going to have another meeting this week again and discuss that and make sure that we continue this program. So 
Just wanted to bring that out for you also. Lastly, <coughs> last month we brought for you the uh, OGI plan document where we intended to uh, do some revisions on that. Since that time, we've received additional comments that we had not had. I think it is premature not to include those comments and respectfully request to table that until we've had a chance to evaluate those new comments and get those in the plan document also. I've, uh, I've asked uh, the uh, Lois and Dan if they would table this because I received a letter uh, with some concerns on the OJI um, from um, a department head and um, I've asked uh, y'all to look over this and uh, I think they're going to be getting together and I think they'll get with the county mayor and, and address some of these issues that, that's been brought up about this and so that if it's okay with the committee I'd like for us to uh, table this for right now and when they get that worked out and bring it back. It's just something that we need to make sure we address fully. When are we anticipating? Uh, hopefully it should be uh, by next meeting. Uh, next meeting is in with Thanksgiving and all I'm concerned that the in order to coordinate it may not happen by that time but hopefully by the December meeting okay I mean I don't hopefully would foresee anything further than that it was some issues that that, that may take a little time but that really need to be addressed and answered um, so. but the program is still in place and effective I'll make a motion that we table the uh, OJI changes in the briefing until December, if not sooner. Okay, is there a second? I'll second. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Hamlet service. Sixteen hundred ninety-eight calls last month. Average response time seven point nine minutes. And we had thirteen coroner's calls. <coughs> we billed one million forty-five thousand eight hundred twenty-seven dollars. Collected three sixty-two four fifty-nine. That gives us year-to-date collections of one million three hundred thirty-eight thousand six hundred ninety-one dollars. Good response. Mm -hmm. Good response time. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. <clears throat> the table at the bottom of the page is the mileage for the Anderson's. We drove a total of 30,795 miles. And we have a one breakdown. And the smaller table at the very bottom of the page is the out of zone cars, 286. <coughs> Next page is details the end services and training, as well as uh, <coughs> activities of some of our special event standbys and so forth. At the bottom of that page is the uh, activities of the sort team. Mm -hmm. I think I sent them to everybody. <coughs> Even got Commissioner Daniel's email addresses. <laughs> Boy, that was tough. <laughs> <laughs> That is, that's a lot of good information yeah. you send us each month to find out what all they're doing. Yeah. I appreciate it. I, it. It keeps you abreast of what's going on in, in the area. It lets you know. Well, I'll keep on sending that to you. <laughs> Next phase is the response time report. Uh, breaks the number of calls and the average response time down as to the individual stations. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Nothing really new there. Burton Street continues to be the busiest station we have, and with also the lowest response time. And the MTSU station is 
gradually gotten bigger than our Southern Road Station as far as number of calls that have been made now. Transport team had a 34 <coughs> critical care transports and they answered 64 911 calls. Following pages, the number of calls divided by commissioner's districts as well as the number of uh, national calls and the number of transport team calls. The following page is the same information except on a, on a year to date basis. I see here an article about my folks retiring. I didn't get a chance to come by that day. I was out of town and we had, we had his little uh, get together for his retirement. And, uh, Mike spent 37 years with the county and was a valuable employee for those 37 years and was going to miss it. questions for Mike. What is a prescription take back event? This has uh, been a combined effort with the Murphy County Sheriff's Department, Murphy Court Police Department, um, and the ambulance service on setting up <coughs> stations where people can bring prescription drugs that they've got sitting around the house that they're not taking anymore and turn those in. And uh, I, believe it's, I believe the Sheriff's Office just showing those that through. Um, <coughs> Great it's been idea. Very successful. So far. It keeps some potential prescription drugs for resale out off the street basically what it does. Uh, that's done on every day. Mm -hmm. explain the uh, Yeah, this is just some information I started providing uh the last month I guess. And just keeping track of how many hours our personnel are absent for FMLA as well as sick and number of vacation hours. And the total for this month is 49444. 40, and last month was 48,000, so there's a little bit of consistency. <coughs> are the ones that uh, do take the effort? FMLA, do they, are they required to take sick leave first if they have it, and if they don't have enough sick leave to take vacation? That's the county's policy. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Michael and report? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Move to approve. Got a motion to have a second. Second. We have a second. All right. All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, budget amendment. We have a budget amendment where we took in money and we'd like to put that money back into the line items room that we've extended from. Any questions? Y'all have heard a request? Move to approve. Have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. And a second. Discussion? Call roll. Commissioner Black? Yes. Commissioner Daniel? Yes. Commissioner Hall? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Sparks? Yes. Commissioner Farley? Yes. Anything else? No, that's it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Mike, real quick, you know that, that accident that happened in Davidson County for that ambulance? Do you know? What? I didn't get to hear this, but it happened. What? You know what caused that? I don't know. It caused it. Um, about all I really know about it is what I saw on the news. And the news but, you know, <coughs> we, we were notified of it very quickly, but. We got the same information that was in the It was a, what do you call it, a, a convalescent? Oh, that was a, it was a convalescent yeah. ambulance. Well, we've got about 10 of those around Rutherford County, don't we? Something like that. Mm -hmm. The people that were on it were <coughs> part time workers that were. Yeah. They're talking about one of them was the Franklin Fire Department, one of them was Fire Department. The one with Metro was still hanging on when last I heard. 
He was really <clears throat> torn up. And, and the funeral for that. Franklin firefighter was today. Yes, uh, anybody else? Appreciate it, Mark. Thank you. Correctional Work Center report. I see you put me off. <laughs> The, uh, the only information I have to share with you tonight is the uh, information that we normally give you on the month to date counts. That's all that's in there. We're really short on staffing right now. Uh, Mr. Smith mentioned something about the uh, litter crews, so we're kind of behind on our county roads, but we're trying to swap individuals to cover different vacancies in different places. So there's not a lot of information I can give you except to tell you that uh, our <coughs> county is 237, uh, a little bit higher than normal. Uh, generally, every, everything is within uh, normal guidelines except for the uh, litter removal. Any questions on the report? Uh, Alan, you still get a lot of people illegally dumping again over the Mall Road. We, uh, we're still sending those crews up there, and yes, every time we go up, we're cleaning them. Is that probably stuff. the worst? I'm sorry. Yeah, out of all the areas that you cover, is that probably the it's, it's worse as far as people illegally dumping. Probably in, in the top five. Yes. Is it? What other areas real bad? Uh, well, that area that you're speaking of it is is really bad, and then uh, we have a lot of dumping uh, uh, over on the uh, Jefferson Pike side around Mon and up in there. Is it? you know, it's just it's those public use areas where people yeah. go into uh, when they go in there and uh, fish or whatever they're doing there. They normally normally leave us a lot of the clean. Yeah. Anybody else? Motion to approve the report. Motion and a second to approve the report. All in favor, motion to say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carried. That's it. Thank you. <coughs> Sheriff Department report. <coughs> How are you doing now? Doing just fine. You've been keeping friendly straight. I can try. requested that we need an additional school patrol position out at Blackman High School and uh, we have found the money within our budget this would only take place beginning in November if, if it passes uh, there's three exits that come out of Blackman High School if you're familiar with that on the right hand <coughs> side you have a school uh, this the student parking lot that has the entrance and the exit, so when school is letting out, the, uh, the right-hand side and the left-hand side have the student parking lots and they're trying to get out. And in the middle is where the school buses are, and the school buses are having a hard time getting out because they're caught in between the two student parking lots. So you got one right there by the football field the entrance and then on the other far side. Three on employees drive is what you're saying. Yes. <clears throat> Motion to approve. We have a motion to have a second. Second. We have a second. Discussion? Call on. I don't need that. You don't. Commissioner Black? Yes. Commissioner Daniel? Yes. Commissioner Hall? Yes. Commissioner P? Yes. Commissioner Schaefer? Yes. Commissioner Sparks? Yes. Commissioner Farley? Yes. Chief, Chief Nelson, is the middle school is completely cleared out by that time? That no, there's, there's still traffic coming in and out of the middle school, too. There's about a 15 minute time frame as far as when we get off the overlap. That overlaps there. To... Just 
Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, in line on the line items. Yes. We don't see any foresee any future problems possible. Don't foresee any future problems. No <laughs> 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 Entertain a motion whenever you know the, the, the report. Motion to approve the report. Got a motion and is there a second? Second. And a second. I'm going to the motion to say aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carried. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, real quick, I'd like to, if I can ask uh, Regina, maybe the sheriff, um, that the illegal dumping that I keep bringing up, um, can, if you have a deputy watch that area, that, that Lamar just seems like it's just terrible people. We can have the zone officer over there just uh, yes, sir. periodically go over and check it. Yeah. yeah. Well, I appreciate it. And, it, and, and that is the Lamar dump site that you're talking uh, about. Lamar, and I think there's a. Is it, Maddox Road, I know it's kind of getting out there on the county line, yeah. but it's just, you know, I went out there when they picked up a lot, and man, it was just, it's just a sad state. They can clean it up, and like two days later, people are out there doing it again, you know. It seemed like they had problems over there for a long time. But y'all can, you can go ahead, I mean, your deputy can cite them right there on site if they witness it, right? What is the fine on something like that? I have no idea. Like illegal dumping is up to $500, I believe. Is it? Yeah, I don't have to pay the Appreciate it. All right, on the uh, emergency, on the emergency <coughs> management agency, uh, Roger couldn't be here tonight, and let me pass out the uh, his report here, <coughs> and also too. Uh, Roger, uh, actually, Roger couldn't be here tonight. The other two are, are actually teaching class tonight, so Roger's in Chattanooga. He's asking for the um, this U.S. grants money, four hundred seventy-eight thousand six hundred twenty-one dollars. He's asking for approval for the mayor to, to sign where they can get this this money to this grant. Um, U.S. was very uh, very good to each one of the jurisdictions in Rutherford County received at 478-621. So, so he would ask for permission to go ahead and send it on to allow the mayor to sign the contract for the grant. I make that motion give the mayor the right for to sign the grant. Second. Okay, we've got a motion and a second. Wouldn't this go to budget? Yes. Okay. Any, any, uh, any questions? Hearing none. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed. Motion carries. Uh, we'll look over his report. And... And you get, whenever you get a chance to entertain a motion to approve his report and send it on. Second. Second. And a second. On the motion, say aye. Aye. All opposed, motion carries. Also tonight on the agenda, uh, during the October 14th meeting, um, I, I guess I have the privilege to be in the chairman of that uh, planning committee. Um, there's a gentleman by the name of Keith Miller that's on that committee with me. Uh, he's with the Amateur Radio Services, Commercial Services, and I we were talking that day and I just wanted him to come up and give us a, uh, a sort of a little small presentation of what they do. I know a lot of people, when it emerges at times during the radio, like the tornado, for example, a lot of people out in the community did not have a clue what these individuals were doing for the, the people in Rutherford County. And I thought if he could come up here and maybe give us a five, ten minute 
um, uh, you know, a little lecture of what they do and, and let the community out there know. So if it's okay with y'all, I'd like to ask them to come up. Thank you, Mr. Farley. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. My name is Keith Miller. I'm an amateur radio operator and I've been licensed since 1981. My amateur radio is M9DGK. And I'm currently the amateur radio emergency service coordinator for Rutherford County. Uh, and like Mr. Farley said, I'd, I'd just like to talk to you for a few minutes about our organization, kind of what we do, what the benefits are to the county, the cities and the citizens here in Rutherford County. So I'm gonna probably need to talk a little bit about history here and I won't try to bore you all very much. Uh, but in the United States, the Amateur Radio Emergency Service or ARIES is a core of trained amateur radio volunteers organized to assist in public service and emergency communications. Uh, it's organized and sponsored by the American Radio Relay League or ARRL. Uh, a long time ago, before amateur radio was even invented, people figured out they needed to have a way to talk. Uh, so most of the time when they did it, they either did it by line of sight, sending runners out, drums, all kinds of stuff, signal fires, lights, heliograph, telegraph, telephone. All of those means were pretty much hard line means of communications. If they lost that, they couldn't do anything with it. Uh, the first transatlantic radio signal um, sent wirelessly was done in 1901 um, and in 1912 as a result of that the first SOS actually went out from a maritime incident which wound up being the Titanic and out of out of that incident although there were thousand lives or more that were lost there were over 700 that were saved just by that one little three-letter call that was sent out and about two years after that uh, the American Radio Relay League was founded by Hiram Percy Maxim and several others. Mr. Maxim is probably as much or more well known for his invention of one of the machine guns that was used during World War I as he was for the American Radio Relay, Relay League, probably even more so. Uh, but as a result of that, there was a need for more skilled Morse operators that could operate wirelessly. So shortly after that, in 1914, Mr. Maxim and others founded the American Radio Relay League. Um, experimentation began and grew out of sorts, so the federal government decided they needed to have a means of regulation of the radio frequency spectrum. And in 1934, they created the Federal Communication Commission. Shortly after that, in 1934, the Amateur Radio Emergency Corps was uh, developed by the American Radio Relay League, and its successor, the Amateur Radio Emergency Service or ARIES, came into being. And so that resulted in amateur radio emergency service here in Rutherford County and what we have today is hard to see areas. It provides a lot of advantages over base communications that are structured within government entities. It allows us to decentralize the infrastructure, which gives us multiple operation points outside of an impact area for which we can establish communication points inside an impact area and be able to move information in and out to uh, assist those that are impacted in an, in an emergency. Um, the people that do that are communications and electronics experts because they have to take, they have to be tested in order to be licensed by the Federal Communications Commission to be able to operate an amateur radio. And I'm fortunate to be an examiner on one of the volunteer teams here in this county that does that work outside of the Amateur Radio Emergency Service. And we do it every other month here in Rutherford County at the Rescue Squad building down on West College Street on the odd months of the year. And there's another group in Rutherford County that does it on the even months of the year. So we offer that opportunity to folks who are interested every month of the year. Uh, it provides a common communication language for all of those operators. And because of the fact that we have a large amount of radio frequency spectrum, it gives us a, a tremendous amount of flexibility to be able to contact uh, people 
at long distance as well as locally through VHF and UHF and microwave operations that we've developed as well as digital communications, satellite operations, etc. We're structured so that we have um, a coverage of and a chain of command from the local area all the way to the national level inside the American Radio Relay League, not counting what we have available to us in the agencies that we serve <coughs> in government, local, uh, state, federal as well, and we do that. We do it on a regular basis. The local coordinator is the emergency coordinator, which I am for Rutherford County. Uh, the area will be a series of counties, or if it's a large enough densely populated area, it might be a city that's broken down into districts like New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Atlanta, Miami, wherever it might be. There's also region, uh, regional uh, coordinators inside that district area or that, that uh, section area that if it's large enough, we have assistant section emergency coordinators as well as an emergency coordinator for that section, um, of which there are 79 geographic sections in the country and the section that we work out of covers the entire state of Tennessee. We have it broken down into three grand regions. Each region has about six to 12 districts in that entire region. Each one of those districts have probably anywhere from 10 to 15 counties. And inside those counties, then are, are individuals like myself. Um, when we work with served agencies, we not only use this structure, but we also use the National Incident Management System and the Incident, Incident Command System to work within those agencies and their structure. Uh, they take the lead, they tell us what they need from us, we give that to them um, as, as they direct us to do that. Here in Rutherford County, I managed to track the history of this organization back into the early 60s, and I've, I think I've tracked it back into the mid to late 1950s, but I don't have it on paper, so I can't say I know we've been here that long. But I know we've been here since the early 60s, in fact, and some work that I was doing, I, I sent out an email to the state of Georgia, and lo and behold, the man that emailed me back on my inquiry was the emergency coordinator here in Rutherford County in the 1970s, uh, who subsequently moved to Georgia. So he was familiar with who we were and what we were doing. So that makes it interesting. We've worked with the National Weather Service, emergency management agencies, locally and, and at the state level, the Red Cross other areas groups across the state and when asked we've gone out of state to help um, work with emergencies um, and some of those emergencies uh, can easily be brought to mind the 1995 tornado in Nashville when we helped support the communication efforts for the Red Cross and others uh, the 2006 tornado outbreak here in Sumner County and northern Davidson County we supported that effort for over 15 hours um, I was on that effort myself personally for over nine of those 15 hours. Uh, the 2008 February tornadoes that struck up in Sumner and Macon counties, uh, I was on that one along with several others and we even helped give uh, communication support and weather uh, prediction support from the National Weather Service radars that we utilized for the search and rescue teams in the field to help get them out of the field and get them into cover if we thought that there was something else that was coming through. Uh, 2009, this year, during the ice storm in early January, we helped support that effort in West Tennessee and in Kentucky. And during the Good Friday tornadoes here in Rutherford County, we supported that with the National Weather Service and subsequently went to the EMA at their invitation to help them, not with communications. The communications were fine. We went in there and helped do things like give out security passes for the impact areas, man the phones for volunteer calls coming in. Just whatever EMA needed, we, we provided that for them. We've also helped support the evacuee, um, the evacuees that came into this area to the air base of Smyrna and other um, shelters for Hurricanes Katrina and Rita, Wilma, as well as Hurricane Gustav. So we've been pretty involved, uh, as you can see, uh, locally and, and in our local area. What we're doing now is we still work with the National Weather Service. Uh, we, we are planning right now to do um, a recognition day at the National Weather Service office for the Skywarn volunteers around the state on the 5th of December. Uh, tomorrow evening, we will be working with Channel 5 News in a Kroger store over in Smyrna on Sam River Parkway to help 
citizens program weather radios uh, because most of them, most folks do not realize that this time of the year is actually the secondary uh, tornado season for this year. And in fact, the month of November is probably one of the worst impact months for tornadoes in the state of Tennessee. Uh, since, night, since 1894, since they've been keeping record, there's been 48 tornadoes in North Tennessee. Yeah, pretty, pretty tough. We also now have amateur operators uh, working with each of the hospitals in Rutherford County here in Murfreesboro, Smyrna, as well as the VA hospital to help test their amateur radio gear and participate in a monthly communications network to ensure that all those hospitals can communicate back and forth with one another. Uh, we work here with Rutherford County Emergency Management. We're in the final phases of putting in a full amateur operation there as backup communications for them that will allow us to do what we call HF or low, lower frequency work, VHF, UHF, digital frequencies. We'll be able to do uh, WinLink 2000, which is a computer-based email system that does not require the internet in order to be able to do it. Um, and that will be staffed by volunteers. Um, we also, through the Tennessee Emergency Management Agency, we do work with them and through them, we work with the Central United States Earthquake Consortium uh, to help feed information to them if there should ever be a need for uh, earthquake impact information from, from this area. We would be the ones that would be asked to relay that to TEMA for further, uh, for forwarding off to uh, QSEC. So we, we're doing several things. We're looking to do a few more. Um, we look forward to expanding. Uh, we started in 2008 tracking community contributions here just to see what our hours and equipment turns into in dollars. Uh, the American Radio Relay that we asked us to voluntarily report activities that we do on a monthly basis. We have training nets each week. Uh, we have other uh, uh, civic things that we do like help provide communications for bike races. The, Christmas parade here in Murfreesboro. We've been working with uh, those folks for probably 15 <coughs> years now, 14 or 15 years. Um, we uh, also worked with uh, Tour de Cure while it was here in Murfreesboro, providing communications between here and uh, the uh, campus in Sewanee and back. Uh, so we turned that into uh, dollars that uh, the American Radio Relay League was using based on Bureau of Labor Statistics volunteer figures so that they could find out what their dollar estimates were for volunteers. So in Rutherford County, even though these figures are complete, we recorded 2,519.05 hours in 2008 from the volunteers in this county. At the stated rate that we were asked to report it at at $19 per hour to the American Radio Relay League, those hours resulted in contributions in the county of $44,060.55. The personal radio equipment, the use of the repeater systems that were built, almost all of which are voluntarily done, they don't take any public dollars, uh, for those operations came to a total of $3,328,800 that are all almost exclusively privately owned and supported. Uh, we've provided an additional sheet for you behind your uh, uh, PowerPoint slides here that uh, give you the full details of this because I couldn't get the headers to actually let the dollars float where they needed to on the slide. So I thought rather than raising any questions, I'd just put the whole sheet in here. The total value of time and equipment for 2008 that we recorded was $3,372,860.55. Um, and we quoted on the bottom of that sheet that the entire year does not reflect every activity participated in for such events as training classes offered to the public, to group members, nor does it include preparation hours for trainers and leaders for events. It also does not include Estimates of personal vehicle usage, mileage of operating costs stored by the volunteers. We currently have 46 members, and of that members, I, membership, I have seven staff and uh, three technical coordinators, and two of those staff are with me here this evening. Um, it's pretty fair to say that there are several hundred more hours, uh, probably several thousand more dollars that we could have legitimately added to this thing, but uh, we just didn't do it. They weren't there. I didn't have what I felt like was accurate enough information to fairly put them on there. Um, 
But we do appreciate the opportunity to introduce you to this organization and look to look forward to working more closely with Weather <coughs> County EMA, other organizations in the county, city governments, municipalities, volunteer organizations for what we can provide for you. And so one of the things that I've also included in here is also a copy of our uh, log operations for the November or the April 10th tornado. Uh, the first is uh, just an actual uh, set of documentation that the operators that ran that particular net uh, took down for the activity that day. I, went, I took the liberty of going back and highlighting where most of the action actually started what was being reported. Uh, the gray highlights on the left side of the documentation represent the time in 24 in military time on that day that those those uh, that information was taken and reported and all of that was reported to the National Weather Service in less than three minutes after that was reported to our net. Um, the second set of documents behind that is a set of logging software that you can see that we use to record all those people that checked into our net that gives us the opportunity then to uh, kind of account for how many people we had. And during that time frame, that day, during the actual tornado event itself, we had 66 people that had checked in. And you can see that each one of these totals represents either a single county or the heart of Tennessee areas, members themselves, or staff members, or folks that we did not have in the, in the uh, in the master software behind that in our log, but had reported in anyway. So we have them up there first. Um, the rest of this is just unabashed advertisement for the American Radio Relay League that I took the liberty of laying in here. So I appreciate your time, and I'll be happy to answer any questions for you. Is there any questions for Mr. Miller? I noticed you said you had a mobile. Somebody made a contact on a mobile unit, so you're able to see contact yes almost almost without exception everyone you see here have not only radios in their home but probably radios in their car and handhelds that they can take with them they have to get out of the car where they can stay in touch with the rest of us um, so you're capable of contacting just about any county agency's frequency at this time we don't we soon will be uh, but the county also has amateur radio equipment that we can tie into so that we can get to them on that equipment. And then if they need to, if they need us to, to go somewhere else, they'll tell us where we need to be and, and how we need to how we need to make it happen. Well, if you monitor our radio channels during a major disaster, you know they get tied up. Yes, we do. I'll give you one example of, of what I was talking here about decentralized infrastructure. And this is just one. Uh, most of you will probably remember about a year, year and a half ago, there was a gentleman who was in a boat that capsized and was sinking off to the coast of Chile. And the Chilean Navy went out and got him and brought him back. The reason they knew he was out there is because he had a ham radio on his boat and he contacted a guy that was living up around Portland, Oregon who happened to be a Chilean natural, who had moved to the United States, but had family there and knew some people in the government and made a phone call to Chile and they sent a boat out and got him. That's how that guy got off the water. Hmm. Otherwise he would have drowned and they would have never known he was there. That's, that's a pretty exaggerated incident, but um, one even better than that is, it's one of the, some of the first communications that came out of New Orleans came off the top of a hospital from a ham radio operator that was stranded up there and couldn't get off. And he had one radio in his, pocket, in, his, in, in his possession on top of that hospital. And he was there for a week and a half before they got it. He was the only means of communication in and out of New Orleans for that time. Anybody else? Keith, how does someone contact you if they if they want more information? So My business card's is. right on the back. There's also a little sticker on the back of that uh, flyer that's in the back of it that has uh, our contact information on it and also gives you our website. Okay. Okay. 
the reason I wanted Mr. Miller to come tonight was, <clears throat> you know, we had talked about some things, and, and I'll be honest with you, I didn't know. And I thought it'd be be best to let the committee and also let people know out in the public that, uh, you know, we got volunteer firefighters, and we got rescue squads and stuff like that, and <clears throat> we got people out here volunteering their time. But on the communication side, just kind of let everybody know that so there are people out there that are willing to help and and they do a good job and kind of shed a little light on, on y'all's organization and and uh, what y'all do for the public. Anybody else? We appreciate y'all and we appreciate you coming tonight and thank you for sharing this with us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, pause. Yeah, I think you got it on your table. Check reports for August and September number two shelter. Nothing out of the ordinary on those months. No one has any questions. Oh. Anybody have any questions on her reports? Oh, last month she was she was she called and asked me for permission not to be here. And, well, she was going to come, but I told her not to. But to worry about uh, staffing out there. questions Tracy is still taking volunteers yes sir so what what's the requirements on that got to be 18 or? we do have some uh, teenagers that come in with parents uh, mm -hmm. come in with them we have an orientation they go through and wait they sign Questions? Looks like we always had a boost in January after everybody gets mm -hmm. animals for Christmas. So yeah, we're talking sure. about buying gifts pets for Christmas. I do think that. Yeah. <coughs> we do try to discourage pets as gifts on the holidays. Got a motion to have a second. Second. And a second. I'll have a motion to say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, to kind of fill the committee in, uh, last month I received a, a call from a constituent, and I y'all have probably had some of these same calls um, concerning um, uh, neighbor, in, in subdivisions, not, not farmland, but in subdivisions where there's goats, um, you know, goats and chickens, chickens and, and stuff like those kind of uh, animals in, in, in a subdivision in homes. And I've asked uh, Tracy to look at and see what um, uh, what other people or other departments or other uh, counties are doing about this situation. And she's, uh, she's looking at it. Because what I had was I had a house in a subdivision that... The neighbor told him he's going to bring in a bunch of goats and chickens. And this, this neighbor called me and he said, what can I do about it? So I got to talk to her. There's nothing. Really? And not in the subdivision. <coughs> There's nothing that can be done. Now I can understand, I mean, if it's on a farm and yeah. farmland and things like that, uh, that's where goats and chickens are supposed to be. This location is in the county, which is part of the issue is it is a plot that's in the county. Um, but it's a planted subdivision. Yes. It's not a planted subdivision. Well, they, you said they can be there no matter what. Yeah. It's a major subdivision. Over three. Oh, yeah. This is a subdivision that's got 100 something houses in it. With no uh, restrictions well, on the subdivision put down at the time of the, of the development. Right. 
And that's the way most places have addressed it from what I've found so far is usually the subdivisions include something in their bylaws that regulate what you're allowed to have on those properties that pertain to animals, wildlife, building structures, whatever the case may be, it's usually covered in those uh, homeowner association bylaws. Or Aren't those only allowed to, restrictions allowed to last for like 15 or 20 years or something? No. <coughs> That, I don't um, know. It just depends on how they drafted that, those restrictions initially as to how they, what the life of them are. So, Gary, what you're talking about, it's not like a pet. It's no a bunch of them. It's, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, the threat exactly. of a bunch of them. The threat of a bunch of them. Yeah. You know, and, and I, I know I'm not the only commissioner in, 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 that's, that's had this call. And, <laughs> you know, and uh, I thought, well, she would get to looking into it and, and see what she might be able to come up with. And I know, uh, especially the the rural commissioners, I know Jack and, and Robert and myself are, have got rural districts, you know, <laughs> and there's somebody else that's probably had this same situation mm -hmm. pop up in their district or could have it. Yeah. And uh, just wanted to look into it and see what the possibilities were. And if any of you have any suggestions or thoughts on it, I'd love to hear them. Feel free to I believe call. that Davidson County just had some publicity about something chickens. very similar to this. Was it chickens, They're I think. still addressing that issue. So we, need, we can follow up and see what uh, practical <laughs> methods they have developed, if any, at least to uh, look at that. All right. So I just want to let the committee know that I have asked her to do this, and, and if y'all can have any input, I know she'd appreciate it. There's no other. You got anything else from your reporting? Huh? No, sir. Y'all have anything else for Paul's? Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Drug court. You're, two, you're number one next month. Am I? Ooh. You're moving to the top next month. Wow. <laughs> Special. <laughs> You know, rotate it down there. <laughs> you just have to go with the plotting, you know? Yep. Appreciate you working with us on it. No problem. You never know, thought they don't have to be Did you fall asleep back there in the back? No, but I'm about ready to. <laughs> What's the problem, people? Well, our numbers are down, for one thing, because yeah. um, what we've decided is that the DUI court was taking away people from the drug court, because we used to just put them in the drug court, but now we've separated them. So when you look at both programs, we have 60 people, so we're still in good shape, but um, so the numbers are low. Then our DUI graduation in November we're probably going to have five or six. So if you put the two together, it would be 10 or 12, which is usually what it is, 10 or 12 <coughs> a year for red graduation. So I'm not too concerned about it. I'm not all right. I have any questions on her before you? Any more? <coughs> I just have some information I wanted to share, but is that part of my report? Yep. Okay. Well, I did want to remind everybody about graduation Thursday at 6 o'clock. Um, and like I said, we will have four people graduating, so it should be very quick. If you want to come to a quick one, this would be the one to come to. <laughs> um, and then also, and I don't know if the mayor has shared this information with anybody, but we have been chosen to host the Tennessee Association of Drug Court Professionals Conference next year. So we have already reserved space at the Embassy Suites, and we're very, very excited. My staff is very excited. So we will be hosting approximately 300 people next December. And um, since it's our 10th year anniversary next year, we really want to make a big deal out of it. That's right. So I'm not sure what we're going to do yet, but I'm sure the mayor will come up with something. <laughs> no pressure there. <laughs> But um, 
at some point we want you guys to be involved too because you've been so supportive and again i'm not sure how that's going to look or anything the the two mayors are going to be doing introductions and opening the ceremony with judge ash but uh, after the, we haven't gotten any further than that <laughs> so, <laughs> but we're very excited and we're also very honored and um we're very pleased to be able to show people what murfreesboro has to offer because everybody always wants to go to nashville and, and i think we have as much as if not more than nashville does um we've got the restaurants we've got the shopping embassy suites is just unbelievable um they are working extremely well with us and have just been a great partner already so kudos to them but anyway we're excited and that that is my report okay. any questions on her report let me ask what with your numbers being down like that what what can you do to get more people to go through the process Tell them it's easy. <laughs> I mean, a lot of people just don't want to go through it then. Yeah. Either either they're not appropriate for the program or they'd rather go to jail. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the easy thing to do is go to jail. Yeah. Well, you turn down some too, don't you? Yeah, they, we do turn you, down. One out of four we mm -hmm. turn down because they're inappropriate. So. Mm -hmm. We have that problem too occasionally, yeah. Or they they realize they're in over their heads, and so they they voluntarily leave. <laughs> what we call what is that with their status? For the... If they voluntarily leave um, mm -hmm. when they're returned to court, they typically are terminated. Now we sort of have an unofficial policy that if they turn themselves in within two weeks, we'll, we'll <coughs> deal with them and you know talk, see if they still <coughs> want to do it. And we have had a few lately that have come back, so we felt good about that. But um, I don't know the younger ones. I guess their trust issues are so severe that they assume when they mess up and do something wrong that we will terminate them anyway and they aren't convinced that we're going to give them another chance, which is what we do in most circumstances. I mean, if they commit robbery or something like that, of course we're not going to give them another chance. But um, if all they did was relapse, then we're going to work with them and possibly put them in a treatment facility or something like that. So. But when you're 21, you think it's the end of the world, you know, when you're looking at jail, I guess. So, and I don't know why they run because you're going, they're going to be caught eventually anyway. So it's kind of silly. To, I don't understand the whole thing. They were thinking straight they wouldn't be doing that in the first place. Well, that's true. You're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So, but if we can keep them long enough, we can usually convince them it's a good thing. And, and they agree. I mean, I've been doing exit interviews with the graduates this week, and they're all, you know, talk about how scared they were at first and how intimidating it was at first and and how much they're thankful that they made it and they it's changed their lives and and um they just can't say enough good stuff which we're here thursday night so you, uh, you never use any of your graduates to talk to mm -hmm. potential people with oh uh, to to participants right or, oh. or potential participants no we really don't they might give a little better insight well you're right especially the younger group mm -hmm. you know they, i mean i listen to someone our age mm -hmm. moved in, someone close to their own age that's been there done that right it's something you might even do is talk to those people and, and develop a helpline mm -hmm. but these guys that are willing that have gone through it and graduated let them be you know somebody they can call mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I feel like I'm slipping or whatever they mm -hmm. want to talk about. Maybe they get some things. Well, now we do do that once they're in the program. They get phone numbers. But before the program, that's that's a good idea, though, to have have a graduate come during the assessment and maybe talk to them. I think that's an excellent idea. But yeah, they do, once they're in, there there's a lot of support for them if they want to use it. Is there anybody else? If not, I'll entertain a motion to approve the report. Second. Motion and a second. I'll have a motion to say aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. You too. Next on the agenda uh, 
as any other business, and I've gotten a request from Commissioner Williams to come before the committee to discuss something. <clears throat> Thank you very much. I don't have a handout, and I'll be <coughs> in an hour, so good. I've had some complaints over the course of the last year and a half, two years, and through watching a lot of things, I just thought I would come up here and see. I talked to uh, Mr. Farley, and he said that y'all would not something that hadn't been looked at in the past, and it's about bicycle riders out on the county roads. We've had a lot of near hits, and it's been progressing. Uh, about two weeks ago, three weeks ago, I saw about 60 riders that were coming through, where it used to be five or 10, and now it seems to be increasing. And in this little mailer that we get as county commissioners uh, from the national scene, I, I, it caught my attention the reason I came up here now is in uh, Iowa, they had an incident and uh, bicyclists got hit, sued the county and won several hundred thousand dollars. After that, this particular county passed a law that they couldn't be on those roads or there were certain roads. I, I haven't dabbled into it, but having seen that, I just thought, that I would come up and get maybe some dialogue started to see if there, if we could go through a process and look at several things to be proactive on this so as not to have a, uh, as our population grows, more people are being cyclists and it might be something as simple as putting signs up that say, watch for bicyclists on this road. I don't, I don't know what, what any of the answers are or any suggestions but to make our roads safer. Another option might be to say there are certain roads that they can't be on. There might be a, a whole array of things that we can do because as if any of you that have traveled into the county road took out in my district, you can top a hill and you can't see them. I mean, they're so sudden, so many blind spots and if you've got a lot of cyclists out of them and don't want to do anything to hurt anybody in the thing, but trying to make it safer. And so, in, in fact, the other day I had a, uh, two complaints that uh, these cyclists were stopping cars on a, they were coming, the cyclists were coming where they had to stop and the other road was going and there was a cyclist that was stopped there stopping cars without a police officer or anything from going down the road. And Now I know all the roads are 40, 45 miles an hour, but they don't ride, they don't go 40, 45 out in, in my district. I don't know about the others pretty much. So anyway, I just thought it might be something of the interest for us to look at. Uh, I did notice, I was watching Andy Griffith the other night and Opie had to buy a 50 cent bicycle tag. So <laughs> 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 I thought, so well, sorry. wheel tag. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, they only got two <laughs> wheels, so maybe I'll <laughs> So, so, so are you advocating the wheel tax? For I'm not <laughs> advocating anything. I'm just throwing out. Uh, that's 40 some years ago, though, when Opie was. Still yeah, that's 40 <laughs> years ago. So I don't know if anybody else had noticed this. Uh, the bicyclists out there, they seem to be increasing. And I'd hate to see somebody get hurt. And if there's something simple that we can do, maybe talk to the people that are in some of these clubs to see what, what they're interested in doing and how we can make all of this safer and avoid somebody getting hit or, or killed and having a lot of problems. Don't know what the answers are, but just thought maybe it might be worth uh, spending <coughs> a little time discussing it over the next few months. I mean, I don't know, uh, Mayor Burgess may have some su suggestions. I know he's a big cyclist enthusiast. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. But uh, I well, but one bicycle. No, I, I, that was a used bicycle that I paid twenty dollars for. <laughs> was, uh, bicycle, well, cyclists, unicyclists, bicyclists, motorcyclists, whatever, they are uh, subject to the rules of the road. They have to obey the laws of the road, just like a automobile or a truck or a motorcycle or anything else. Well, that that is true. But well, I mean, have you walked it? around on the sidewalks in downtown Murfreesboro lately? 
And and then the, the other the, the other aspect the of this is that the county roads are paid for by they aren't paid for with property tax money. They are paid paid for with wheel tax money. Gasoline tax money. Gasoline, gasoline tax money primarily. There's a small amount of wheel tax money that goes in that and so on. So TBA? Not the mining, TV. there's a there's a, TV. a extraction, fee. extraction fees part of that goes for that. So property tax does not go in. I mean that is not an argument that they've put property tax that because that money doesn't go in there. And I say they don't want to use them, but just trying to make something safety. Maybe it's just signs up or identifying certain roads that they can be on or should be on or not be on. I don't know what the answer is or if we need to do anything. Well, I know a lot of the bicycle enthusiasts are. are or an advocate for uh, bicycle lanes, you know. On, well, on that's not that's that's quite a lot more pavement in this county. But when I saw that, I'm just uh, saying that's what I mean. Oh no! But when when yeah. when we saw that, when I saw that in that uh, thing that we get from the national county commissioners mm -hmm. thing, where that county out there had been successfully sued and several hundred thousand dollars, and, and that they had passed the law to that, I thought it might be worth some us discussing something to at least make the attempt to make these roads safer from if so, nothing else signage or identifying certain ones. So someone was riding on a bicycle on a county road in Iowa, got run over, and they sued the county for getting run over. And a judge I don't know the details. Oh, yeah. I just, it, in this thing, it just said that, that a the guy had won 350 or $450,000 from the county for uh, after getting hurt in a bicycle accident. And after then, the county commission over there voted to make them where they couldn't ride on the county roads. Don't know how they can do that legally, don't know any of that part, but. Uh, Have you talked to Jim Cope about it? I talked, no, I mean, I just. Uh, we, we need to get a copy of that, uh, that lawsuit and that, that issue. I mean, that was out there in Iowa with that. But can help us surf the internet and we will, we'll get some more data. But I just thought that would be worth something else to kind of but kick you know, it's, 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 I mean, it's kind of ironic you're talking about this because just last night on Nissan Drive, there was a guy coming down the wrong way on a, on a bicycle. And then before I knew it, I was right there on him. And, and I thought, man, I could have, you know, I, I mean, I, I felt like I come close to hitting him. He's coming the wrong way and you, and you didn't see him. But uh, my secretary today told me about a little, a little girl she knows struck and killed me on a bicycle. And if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, it was here in, in this county. Because she was making a comment, she was surprised that the girl didn't serve jail time or something. But I think what you're, what this, the, you know, situation you're talking about is, you know, it may seem kind of trivial, but I think it's kind of serious because I see these people ride on Wicked Lane or Jefferson Pike, and to me, you take your life and your own hands when you're doing that. I'd like to see us be ahead of the program as opposed to trying to catch up on something. If it's something that we could work on with them as a safety awareness and do something on that, I think we at least ought to maybe. Kick it around a little bit, but you know, that was all I wanted. Are you talking about just the events? You know, talking about there are a lot of people out there that their bicycle is the way they commute to work mm -hmm. and everything else as far as transportation. Mm -hmm. You talking about those folks too? Mm -hmm. Anybody on the road? I don't have, have any be. specific suggestion. I'm just seeing a potential problem, and if well, the, what, the, what would the, won't you do this? I mean, I'm the type of person. Don't give me the, the problem, give me a solution type deal. Once you get in touch with our, our county attorney and bring up something and maybe bring something to us that we can look at. Well, I guess where I was going with that is that's what this committee is. That's the reason I came up here because y'all with public safety. And if y'all contacted him and asked him to, to look into that, then that would be coming from the I'm just following the process of trying to go to the committee and the committee. If if y'all want to do something like that, ask him to look into some of that. I, I don't know what the answers are. I just know they're riding around. And, and I think maybe there's there's surely there's a, a cyclist association, these bike shops. We could maybe there's a way that we communicate with them and, and get some feedback with them, some suggestions. Cause I think you're going in the right direction. I mean, it's you're seeing a lot more people riding like that, and um, uh, and like the guy that was riding the wrong. Side of the road. I mean, and I could have, I could have hit, struck and killed that guy last night. You know, with riding like that. So it's it's something that that could be a problem. I think let's get some feedback from from the association. Some of this, these these bicycles. I'll take this under 
some sort of a directive advisement. Uh, there has been just about completed, I think, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, which is a group that studies roads and traffic, and they've, they've been engaged in, they have a just about complete study on bicycle use in Middle Tennessee. There may be some things in there that would be even useful. Uh, we'll get a copy of that, we'll read that, we'll study that, we'll review what we may have happened in this Iowa instant, and we can talk to the county attorney and see if he has us any suggestions that we could uh, we could offer that might improve this. Well, I understand your concerns there. One thing I want to point out is to look at most of the transit systems that are in the larger metropolitan areas. Almost all of them have bicycle racks now, and I encourage some people to, you know, seek alternate mm -hmm. means of transportation. But I know exactly what you're talking about, some of these little narrow country roads. You know, unlike maybe some of these event days that they've got, is we post some signs up say, hey, here's our route. You know, be watching for them in these areas. A little more just for their for their safety, too. So. Well, I mean, just had three, three, three weeks ago, there was not an event, but there were still 50 or 60 riders that were coming through in the course of, and when you get that many coming through, that, I think they a lot of like on weekends and stuff. They got bike clubs. They get out and ride. They'll, I mean, they they'll come down Rooker Lane out there where I live, and, and from time to time, and there's they, there's there's bicycle clubs throughout the county that that, that ride on the weekends. I mean, to me, they're following the law. And, you know, I'm not talking about somebody driving head on towards you or you know, riding in the middle. Yeah, of the road. To me, that's not, not following the law. What it was. Well, it's not. It's not. I mean, I, I think they've got as much right yeah. as anybody to use. I mean, and then you turn around and penalize them for some idiot out there. I mean, we all got penalized for everybody that drove a car recklessly. We'd all be in trouble. Well, well that was all I had about, about, yes, about that. All right. Well, uh, you know, it's, to me, it's a two way street. And listen, last night, I was going to church in the city of Laverne. It was dark. It was about 6.30. Turned to a, onto a side road, a more side road. And there was two kids half out in the middle of the road, dark clothes on, on bikes with not even a reflector on the bike. Yeah, most of the mean, cyclist yeah. clubs, though, yeah, I mean, that's they will. Yeah, right. but they do. you'll also, you, you'll get distance. a lot of times they're running, riding two and three abreast, too. But the sample that I was more familiar with was walking around the Greenway, starting at Cannonsburg and going around to the next major junction after you cross the railroad tracks and go that way. And I found there are two bridges there that you go under. And the good bike riders of which I felt there were more than the others, would say, passing on the left, just before they got to you, so that you'd know, because there, there was also water there, and you could get dumped off in the water, <coughs> and all that sort of thing, if you want to. <coughs> and around town, there's such a variation. If we get people just to standardize their writing, Habits, we'd be way ahead of the game. That's hard to do. If you're talking riding on some of those county roads, it's a whole different ball game than yeah. riding on the Greenway. Yeah. Well, you. sure, <laughs> but there are no, there are no uh, shoulders on a lot of places out in the county. A lot, How about just about all. Yeah, <laughs> I know Jefferson Which Pike. makes it harder to deal Jefferson with the Pike's been designated as a bike route. Uh, as far as uh, I don't know what, who approved it, state, somebody has approved Jefferson Pike, and I wouldn't ride a, I live on Jefferson, I wouldn't ride a bicycle, I, 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 I wouldn't ride it a quarter of a mile down the road, but uh, I think on some of these routes it's already been uh, designated. Now, the state roads, I know, I don't know about the county. I don't John Grace did a bicycle ride on. It's got those wide shoulders. Yeah. Playing roads. So that's, uh, that's a good one. 70 mile an hour vehicles going on. <laughs> 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 okay.
Alright. Is there any other business come before the committee? Just going to announce the Smart Alliance Club's having their annual bean dinner at Life Point Church this Friday from 11 to 1. If y'all can make it, maybe the mayor can make it for the Lions Club fundraiser. Yeah. 11 p.m. to 1 a.m.? No, 11. <laughs> 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay. It's for lunch. Yeah. Anybody else? All right. Mr. Chairman, thank y'all. All right, sir.